Ja. Ähm. Danke dir. I will do it in English because there are some people who do not understand German. And the first session was in English already. You are the exception. So, so what I learned in the five minutes is the German cinemas doing so bad that now we have Java in cinema. <laughs> and Java is doing so well that all magazines are free, right? So Java supports German cinemas, right? This is a quality content, I would say, right? With Agile and Architect and whatever. So this is true. This is going to be a keynote. And uh, in the airplane yesterday, I actually planned to hack the whole time, and but this wouldn't be a keynote. Also, I will hack something uh, to show you that it actually even works. But uh, I prepared some slides and translate them to English now. So first about, I'm freelancer working with Java since 1995. And the strange thing is, I really like it still. And I don't try even, you know, to be a manager or whatever. I just like hacking. So, and really enjoy that. And uh, I'm not really interested in Scala, Kotlin, or whatever. So I do JavaScript in Java. I'm very happy. So it could be that uh, with Scala would make me happier, but I don't think so. So um, I don't have so much time to compile. This is the problem, right? So um, what I do, uh, the most interesting part is the Airhex FM. This is a podcast. Why are doing this? Because usually I have no, no time at conferences to speak with interesting people. So what I did is I started like the podcast and uh, there's like one hour conversation. I was curious about micro profiles. I interviewed Emily, right? So we did a podcast stand up. So this, she's like the micro profile guru and uh, ask all questions interest me. And uh, the most interesting podcast for today as well is uh, Mike Milinkovic. He's from uh, Eclipse Foundation. I ask hard questions about, or hard for me, interesting questions about Jakarta EE4J and all the chaos from last year. And uh, now I understand everything, and I try to translate it to you as well. So some workshops on the Munich airport. And uh, this is my, so this was like, you know, the one second uh, ads where you know whatever you saw. This is like, you uh, know, the black magic. But now, um, why I'm still sane, I hope, um, learn once and never, never migrate. So I didn't actually want it to learn all the fancy frameworks for the beginning. I just stick with the middle. And uh, the interesting part is 80% of li left, and right, left and right of the middle just died in the last 20 years. So I didn't have to re relearn everything uh, every two days. And this is probably why I still enjoy that. And the same happens now in web. So in web, I do the same. So uh, just try to delete frameworks and be happy. So um, now, start with Java 7. Oh, if you have any questions, just ask me. It should be interactive. So this is the first slide with content, which I had to translate from German to English. So that's the first one. Java 7 or 8. So last year, Java 8 came out, and I got lots of, lots of uh, uh, questions, interviews two years before, or even three. What's my feeling that Java is la late? And I said, OK, I have to admit, I, I have complete different problems in project. It's not like people missing new APIs. It's more like you know they exaggerate with the existing APIs. So um, I will talk a little bit uh, in the next uh, session about that. But it seems to me like you know, insurance companies are not that interested in selling insurances. They're more like in mapping layers or data transfer objects or uh, data access objects or whatever they can do, just not to touch the business logic. So this was my problem in my project. Was, OK, for the marketing, Java 8 is great. But it's not like we will speed up you know, all projects by 30%. So this was my personal view, which was not that popular. But Java 8 came out, and I'm really happy with that. So um, on, the same, on the same level, on the s uh, around the same time, there was Java 1 last year. This was, uh, I think, October. And um, with uh, around Java 7, I got a call with, uh, I think it was, uh, it was pe were people from Payara, were people from Red Hat. And they asked, what should we do about inactivity of Oracle? So we could try, try to, s to do something and call it MicroProfile. And I'll say, OK, we could do something. But actually, Java 7 works. It's like, yeah, but then we could Im move faster. And um, so my, uh, my, um, my opinion about MicroProfile was in the first, uh, I would say, one to two years, uh, superfluous stuff just for marketing. So if someone would like to play with you know, two ma max less jar and, and be happy that the uh, application server takes in production two kilobyte less RAM, they should do MicroProfile and then can play a little bit more with the technology. 
So um, about one and a half year ago, what I completely missed and didn't recognize back then is that most application servers, stock application servers we already have, support both Java 8 and MicroProfile. And this changed my opinion completely because then I can actually use MicroProfile right now in most application servers without changing anything. And this changing anything, this is what I like in projects. I don't like to come in and say, look, delete everything. We introduce a new framework. Uh, everything is going to be better and after half year, do the same, you know, uh, instead of request response framework, then reactive framework or whatever framework you get in two years. So, but something will always happen. Um, you always will find a reason not to focus on business logic, right? So, now, um, and uh, in the podcast with Emily, what also interesting, so you have four releases in a year, which is incredible. So we get four re releases, the, 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 the cadence is ex extremely fast, and they are very, very pragmatic. At the same time, or the same time, a little bit later, it was uh, one year um, before, so it was uh, October 2017, uh, I got, uh, I was, I think it was before Java 1 or the edge Java 1, there was like uh, ee 4 js uh, is out and o Oracle open sources the Java E and call it ee 4 j It's like ee 4 j they are crazy. And why? Because before I did some code reviews and this was the same story, log4j, simple log4j, but no business logic, just uh, logging, configuration, caching and mapping and one class which does something. This was <laughs> my world. And then Oracle came out with EE4J, another EE4J, just stupid name, I hate it. So like Log4J, SL4J, and EE4J. And what turned out, this EE4J name really does not matter at all. And this is what I, uh, uh, what was not clear to me at all. And also wasn't clear at all how Eclipse operates, because what I didn't like at Eclipse is the Eclipse IDE. Why I didn't like that? Yeah, because it was the same. You go to the page, you get 50 IDEs, and you actually would like only to, to, to create a small Java project, and you will ask you, would you like to have Eclipse for modelers, for testers, or I don't know, for cookers, or for, for whatever, for astronomists? And I say, no, I would just take some code. And now, this was the, also the question to, to, to Mike. It's like, I don't like, you know, to end up with Java like in Eclipse where if you would like to have a profile for, I don't know, for CRUD, I get uh, th three less classes, and a profile for WebSocket, I get five more classes, and I can s save, you know, two cents in production because I save half a RAM of memory. Um, question so far? So what it turned out, this E4J doesn't matter. This is uh, like a uh, name of the container of all projects of the implementation, and no one actually talks about E4J, and no one will see E4J in the source code. What is a good thing? The question is, what is the Jakarta EE? And this Jakarta EE is this what Eclipse doesn't have. So this is my understanding. Eclipse IDE only has the EE for J, but there is no Jakarta EE counterpart. And what the Jakarta EE is, is like the brand. And this is unique, also unique. Um, it told me that this is like the um, JCP of Jakarta EE and, and people and um, and uh, the, the cadence of E4J and Jakarta EE could be even different. So we could have 50 releases of E4J and only one release of Jakarta EE. This was absolutely not clear to me. So the next question was, okay, nice, but let's say I have a great idea and I would like to, to start my new, you know, my new logging framework. I would like to have my logging bin 4 j let's say, in uh, E4J, how to do this? And they say, okay, this is actually fr pretty easy. I have to, um, to start up a new project, um, apply it in the PMC, and if it's good enough, it's going to be taken. And how it usually works in 4J is you have to become a committer. And if you are a committer, and this is our way to do this, you have to contribute in, in one point of time. The other committers will say it is cheaper to make you a committer, you don't have to review your changes. And then you become a committer. And if you are a committer, uh, you have a vote. And with the vote, you can vote against the others. So this is, how, uh, this is transparent how Jakarta EE works. And this is perfect for me. Why? Because I was really concerned with the whole Jakarta E. You can follow my mailing lists, uh, my mails in the Jakarta E community, because the mailing and, and what I learned is the mailing list doesn't have any, any anything to say. So they can they can dream about whatever they they do. They are not committers usually, so which is a very good thing. Why? Because from day one they try to introduce more profiles, which I really hated. So what I like in Java E the most, or Jakarta E, or Micro Profile. You get one thing, one dependency, and you start your project. 
So I don't like, you know, a huge investigation at the beginning, which microprofiles might be interested in my thing. I would like to have everything at once and fast and start hacking. And it seems like it will remain the same because uh, the whole Jakarta E profiles will have to be decided by the Jakarta E committee and therefore, uh, and therefore this is not like someone will get an idea on the mailing list and we get new profiles. Okay, so we are safe. So it will somehow like Jakar Jakarta E, you can call it monolithic, which I like. Why? Because I show you how monolithic is this a little bit in source code. And the micro profile is similar. You ha we have 2.0 version, I think, right now, out, or even 2.0. Payar already, already supports, Open Liberty, I think, supports 2.0. And uh, what I use in production is 1.3. But I don't care, you know, that I just would like to have open API or, or open tracing. I don't care about that. I would like to have the whole thing. I'm using open API, or sorry, uh, micro profile 2.0 or 1.3, and I'm absolutely not interested just having, let's say, fault tolerance, but not the config. I don't care. I would have to have all. Why? Because of speed. So, micro profile, we covered that. What is the relation about Jakarta E and micro profile? My impression is the Jakarta E people would like to have micro profile integrated, and I would say it would be probably not that smart because micro profile iterates very quickly, they are independent. And how it is right now, it is perfect, I would say. And uh, if they will integrate to Jakarta E, they will probably slow down the whole micro profile, which would be a bad thing. And right now, if you consider a health check, for instance, API, there are view classes. It was created by, by uh, I think, a team of two, or, or even one guy created this, and, and, and it's done. Questions? This is the future of enterprise. So you have this. And, and by the way, Pivotal Microsoft, everyone is part of Jakarta E. Okay, and how, and how it happened, uh, I was curious, what was the process? And there was one manager at Oracle, did not, <laughs> he's no more at Oracle, Oracle could be uh, the reason, but I don't know, uh, uh, Mark Havich, and uh, he uh, pinged uh, Mike and said, um, um, we would like to do something with Java, do you have time to talk? And they met, and now, now they got uh, Jakarta, they got E4G started, E4J. Now, the name Jakarta is brilliant, I really like that. Every other names were just terrible, Enterprise, Java for something, uh, who cares. But Jakarta is great, because we had Jakarta Apache.org, a piece of Java history, there was the Tomcat stuff, was a uh, part of Jakarta, and Apache don donated the Jakarta to uh, Eclipse, so now then Jakarta is official, and the logo is great. I, I forgot to, uh, to show you the logo, but you have the logo, right? You have to show it. It looks like a sailing boat with something, right? So, and um, the idea of Jakarta came from David Blevins, right? From Tommy. Is it true? He had the idea, and David Blevins is the uh, guy behind OpenEGB and, and Tommy, which is a, a very small, as small as Open Liberty application server. So, this is now uh, history. So, and uh, I would just to clarify that because it seems like there's a lot of confusion going on what it actually is. Any questions? Everyone crystal clear? Perfect. So E4J killed, Jakarta E lives, so this is what matters. And we get released, I, I guess, end of year, it's planned to have a release. Now the question is, why it takes so long? And because the uh, scope is larger, by the way, this is the one of the largest projects on Eclipse. Why it's larger? Because what they do right now is they create a CICD, transparent Jenkins pipelines for each project, which were not existing before. And they say this is part of the project to have the transparency. They migrate the whole TCK, which is not part, official part of Jac Java E distribution, is now part of Jakarta E, and this is a lot of work. So if you have time, contribute, you can do really, just, hey, I would like to help you with the pipeline, and you can do it. So no, not a problem, it's a completely open community. And they would like uh, to have some help, so. Questions? So after the show, create some pipelines, and they are happy. So. And this is marketing. Uh, yeah, this is, if you would like to come to Munich, there are workshops end of year. Now, set up a Java e project, um, and let's call it JCon. And um, what it is is, this is how I start my projects, and because I do it so often, set regions, I don't know what it even is, set up a Java e project. So, and I will show you, this is just a Maven archetype. Cat. So, and um, uh, you can use it in IDE. In, I have to build uh, NetBeans, of course, and, and Visual Studio Code or whatever. And because I would show you that it also, also works without IDE, and what I do usually, not at, 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 ver at conferences, I usu usually use some scripts. And now call it um, JCon, and if the internet is working, I set up Java project and call it JCon. 
So and now the project hopefully is going to be created. It tries to pull the dependencies from uh, Maven Central, not Apache Central, Maven Central. And now I need an IDE. I was asked before the show which IDE I'm using. I'm, I'm using right now still NetBeans because I only need Maven, but I also use more and more Visual Studio Code. I still try to avoid a little bit Eclipse, and I like IntelliJ. The problem is the uh, shortcuts are just crazy, and the initial setup is like you cannot explain to anyone how to set up application server in, in IntelliJ. But if it runs, it runs, but then you forget it again, what you actually did. And, 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 and people ask me, can you show me, we just would like to deploy once to Payara, and, and I couldn't. And I say, you, 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 you talk how easy Java is, and you cannot even set up the server. It's like, yeah, IntelliJ. I, I, I can show you how to do command line, but IntelliJ is a different story. Okay. So now, what I mean by simple, so now I switch to junk workspace, and you will recognize, hopefully, there's a project JCon, and this is all support I need. And um, so, and this is a Java 8 project, and usually, what I do always is all my projects right now, no kidding, are that. So 1.3, 2.0, not yet, but I will start with 2.0 with Payara 5, and I will use today uh, Payara, I could use Whitefly, and uh, next week I'm using Open Liberty for a startup that is a better fit for Open Liberty. So if the conference would be one week later, I would switch to Open Liberty. The problem is I don't have like conference lop laptop. Everything is set up with Payara and Whitefly, so it's a little bit of risk now to show you Open Liberty because I don't know. Didn't try it for a few weeks. Okay? So, huh? Yeah, she will sh show you Open Liberty. And uh, what I can tell you is um, Open Liberty right now is one of the best, and this is, uh, it is I would call it, is like the next generation of WebSphere because it is, you shouldn't mention WebSphere at all in, in if you have Open Liberty. This is the smallest, startup is the fastest, and uh, very pragmatic configuration, so this is what I can tell you about Open Liberty. It's completely open source right now, and you can buy without any problems support from, uh, from IBM. Why I know that? Because I was curious, I did a podcast with uh, Erin Schnabel, and she is the, uh, was, was it she? She was one of the um, Open Liberty architects? Yeah. Architects. And so I asked uh, her hard questions, and what interests me for my clients, if I just download Open Liberty, can I buy support, yes or no? Um, and you can, if you like. If no, don't buy it. Yeah, but this uh, got the information show a few weeks ago. So you can buy the support for Open Liberty, but you don't have to. So And there's no limitations, no like, yeah. Okay, you are from IBM actually, right? Yeah. Okay, so didn't do this. So, perfect. Um, now we have everything set up. So what's interesting, interesting for me is um, no super pumps, no plugins, everything forbidden. So this is like, uh, this is the, the, uh, the blueprint for a Java 8 project. So if, uh, if now the profiles will come, and I will have you know to open the micro profile, and you will see that 200 dependencies to micro profile and 300 Java E8 profile, this is, I'm absolutely not interested in it. Why not? Because it's not maintainable, not simple, and this is not Java E. So I do something else, but this is the philosophy is completely different. Agreed? So what well you should at least agree, this is simpler than the exploded format. How it's called best of breed, where be before the uh, project, you have <laughs> investigation phase, you know, which version of a logging framework should I choose and which version of JAXORS implementation should I choose, and then um, after the exploration phase, the project is usually over. Okay, so now we can run it, and I would run it on Payara. Why? Because I use it right now in uh, production. And where is it? Payara 5, should remember. And um, White Flight 14 is the only application server which does not support all of the micro profile specs, but they are uh, doing better and better. And uh, they have config and open tracing with Jaeger, but they will support in the next version more and more. Payara supports 2.0 full, Open Liberty supports everything, and Tommy supports all mi micro profile, but not everything from Java 8, right? Not quite. So, what is the problem with Tommy? Okay, so Tommy is supporting uh, towards everything. So by the way, what you saw right now was complete reboot of everything here. Yeah? This is like the cloud is started and we have enjoyed Java 8. So um, now what interests me is, of course, 
uh, what's going on here? JCon. And the only thing which matters for me is that. And you see that the JCon war is 3.5k. Why is the case? Because uh, yeah, I don't have to deploy to ship my application infrastructure again. And this is why I'm still doing Java E and even more and more in cloud native environment because the pushes are fast. So to demonstrate you this, I would like to just create a Docker deployment, which is um, just to give you a feeling. And I think it comes with Glassfish and I wanted to use Pyara 5, Pyara 5. So now what it means is it just uses, uh, it, it uses uh, the Pyara 5 as a base image. And um, and now I do a full build, clean I uh, cleaner, it does not exist, install and docker build minus D, uh, let's call it jcon, jcon, no, jcon1, right? So this is his t-shirt. So we have that and uh, hopefully it will build. No, now we have full build and the docker image is created. So this is uh, the Docker image comprises of uh, Payara Full. It's the largest available application server out there, I would say, Payara. I never use the smaller Payara because it doesn't matter. Uh, it uses CentOS 7, the largest, uh, no, not Alpine Linux, and OpenJDK also full without any tricks. So this the worst possible experience uh, y you can get. And uh, behind the scenes, a cloud is also running on the machine. So it cannot be slower than this. And if it's slower, usually one project, everything escalated, and it turned out then they are running, uh, running a virus scanner, and the virus scanner scans the JVM itself. So it was the securest deployment ever. So now, doc, docker run minus D minus P. I have to be careful with the port. H2H2, H2H2, 8080. And this also, no one does that in production. What I usually use is OpenShift. Uh, and OpenShift uh, um, integrates um, Kubernetes, HA proxy, etcd, and the whole deployment. But this is what you could start with. Uh, Docker run minus D minus P this, and then we call that name is one, and the name was jcon one, hopefully. Yes. Docker PS is running. Docker logs one is running. And, uh, and now, Docker history one. Uh, yeah, Docker history jcon1. So now we are all young developers, so Java is the most young, fresh language. So what we have here, uh, you see two years ago I installed probably CentOS 7, I guess. 19 years, uh, 19 years, 19 months ago it was, uh, I guess, Open JDK or something. And um, what um, what's interesting is the upper the stack, the fresh it is. So this was probably Payara. Five, this is five month, months old Payara. And what I did uh, one minute ago, I, I created a Docker image which is 4K big. So and after this demonstration, everyone laughs actually Java E. Why? Because you push the whole image to the private registry of your cloud. And then you push, you know, 2,000 times a day, 4K. So having that said, none of my production images 4K. But uh, usually, most of them are lo uh, smaller than one meg. And our podcast will come out soon. How big wa were your images? I forgot it because you have the whole, uh, how it's called, not uh, the uh, cloud stuff from IBM. The, uh, how is that? Not Hudson. What is the name of the guy? No Jenkins, not Hudson. <laughs> The uh, uh, Watson, <laughs> yeah, he has a parts of Watson in the war, and it's still uh, uh, small enough. How how big was it? Five megs or something? Five megs because of w Watson APIs. But Watson is okay; it's not a part of Java, so you have to package Watson. Questions about that? So I can tell you this is what I do after the show. So do it all the time. This, okay? No fiddling with dependencies. And the question is, uh, or the question, I don't care how big the platform is because the platform is never deployed to the cloud. Now, you can say, how big is the image then? And this is what I can show you. So, and the image uh, here is, um, you see, 500 megs. 500, these are lots of images. So, and, and um, 
so this is the last one, it's 580, three minutes ago, 70 hours is something, it, um, and uh, yeah, elastic surge and whatever, but um, there are around 560 megs. So, it, of course, impossible to have th that large hard disk for all the images. But what Docker does is, of course, Payara is once on my machine, and all other images refer to the same. So it's like, you know, uh, consistent hashing or Merkle tree. Okay? So, and the funny story is, I did some serverless Java, <laughs> And the function image was larger than the application server. <laughs> Just one function, right? And so, okay, this light waves, so okay, take a look at the size, and it was larger. And uh, my project next week with the Open Liberty, uh, probably we'll have to use um, a Lambda functions because of marketing. And uh, what, what, what we, what we uh, will do probably because of productivity, package Open Liberty as a Lambda function. Uh, because it's more productive and it's small enough. It doesn't matter whether it is, uh, you know, 500 megs or 520. No one cares about this. So um, just just to, to give you an impression. So before you justify what is lightweight or heavyweight, just measure and see how it behaves. This is my advice. You will be surprised, you know, uh, how it really looks in 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 production. Any questions? Yeah. Not conference. I'm not at conferences. I try to avoid conferences. Uh, just and hacking. Project. No conference, no. She asked me, give give me clients, and no, I cannot. I have NDAs everywhere. You know, this is the problem. If you have consultant, the first you have to sign paper, like you cannot tell anyone you're doing Java. <laughs> yeah. So now we have the basis. Now, what about micro profile? Now, uh, how much time do we have? Marcus, how much time? Where is the guy with the fancy? 15 minutes, very good. So what happened so far? Nothing. So this was just Java 8 with one single endpoint. And usually what you would like to have is you will have to have a kind of facade. And I would like to call it pink, uh, let's say, it's service. And I will create a mess here because it doesn't matter. The session after the session, there's about how to structure this so I can clean up the mess, right? So um, now, uh, usually, you will ha would like to have stage-independent configuration. And how it works in Cloud Native, uh, you will have to let look up the stuff in environment entries and then in system properties usually or whatever source you have. So in uh, Java E, you cannot do this. Usually I hack on stage the Java E way, which is like one liner. I deleted the one liner because there is an even better stuff called config property. And there's two names, just you can use the name, which is the name of the property, call it message. And then you have the default value and call it uh, jcon1. JCon1, and then say here at um, inject, and then string message, and this is configured. And this is configured with default. It goes to environment entries, and then it goes in system properties. And if you're not satisfied with that, you can uh, provi provide your own config sources with priorities. I never did that, but this, this is no, this is possible to do this. For instance, Microsoft Asia did it. They have config sources for Microsoft Asia. They come out of the box provided by Microsoft. Why that? Because Microsoft is a part of uh, Jakarta E. And uh, why that? Because Bruno Borges, evangelist at Oracle, now works for Microsoft, right? So, um, and this is like the short cycle. So now we have this. And let's say I would like to have here, like, good morning. And what all projects do, because it's easy, now we have Grafana, and the other, Grafana and the other, Kibana, Grafana, and all other Afanas. And the problem is, no kidding, last year uh, a client came to me and say, we have lots of dashboards, but we cannot tell whether our use case is successful. So I was really curious about the dashboards. And I look at the dashboards and they could tell you everything, Pro probably even though temperature in the room and uh, size of the, I don't know, atoms inside the CPU. But no one could tell actually whether something was bought or not. It's like, look, I have no idea what you are building, but for me, your system is like a black box. Something goes in and something goes out. I would start with counting that. And they talked and talked and say, you are genius. You know, only you with you know, 20 years of experience can do something like this. And what they tel could tell me, you know, how often the garbage collector ran. It's like, is this too often? It's like, I don't know, I, and I don't care if it works. If you sell your stuff, let it run. I mean, if it's fast enough, the garbage collector should also do something, right? So, good morning. So then, what you should start with, for instance, you could do something like this. You can say, I have a long adder. Uh, 
let's say morning counter and the morning counter but let's do it ma make it clear in post construct new equals yeah there's probably one language that is more concise because there is no equals so you can s so there is uh, we have this and then this morning counter increment and say return good morning plus this message so and now now the cool story is what we start with why I really like micro profile is the following we have uh, int uh, good morning count and in this particular project would um, item sold so easy and they say okay but we Prometheus and the stuff okay let's do this gauge which is like counter and um, and then uh, you have to specify units and this is a little bit strange so this could be improved but we have time so there's four releases a year so we can contribute and uh, this is like uh, let's say either I say count or morning it doesn't matter this is that uh, label in Prometheus later and what I have to do is to say return this uh, where was it the counter in value so and what this means is we have a mono, mon, mon, how many monolithic monotonic counter which just increases the values it is named and uh, we will see in Prometheus uh, in the dashboards how many how often good morning was actually executed so this is the only business logic I have it is the most interesting one and I do not care about number of transactions number of rollbacks this could be interesting in debugging phase so the same if you buy a car it is the most important thing is you know is it fill up and does it does it go yeah uh, I would like to see the speed or I have to see the speed otherwise I won't run a lot in Germany so uh, and um, and if developers were car designers we would see you know in the dashboard like you know the temperature of the inner workings of the engine or you know the uh, pressure in the exhaust pipes but no one will know whether we are actually any driving or not this is what what I see in projects right so gauge the most important annotation so but you, you know I know you are a developer so you can start with meter for instance so what meter does you have the rolling uh, average and the uh, and the uh, and the threshold and so forth and one uh, <laughs> consultant told me he always starts with meters because then it looks more professional so okay then I go with that and uh, and then afterwards you should uh, in one point of time just start with a simple but this is just a counter right so um was <laughs> Java user group in Hamburg actually and so now we can uh, just inject this and um, of course what now happens in my project is like to say you are crazy you cannot go without private so okay if you really like I can do it private but it does not matter in Java no one will is able to access this directly so if you like private write it but this is a waste of time now and what happens then? You know, all sonar source, all Jenkins are uh, and just no, no Jenkins. The sonar source system blows up. So, oh, this is uh, it's very poor co uh, code quality. There is one private lacking. So now service. Good morning. Code review last week. They tested uh, co default constructors of all data transfer objects, and uh, wrote a small introspection framework which invokes all getters and setters. Um, also nice uh, nice uh, way to spend time so we have this hopefully uh, wait a second it could even work I uh, forgot what's actually running uh, so this uh, no should be different output enjoy Java e so let's run it again and if not I will run it on docker can you understand this I can I read exactly. I ran Maven clean install from command line, which undeployed the whole application. So now I should sh see something pink. Uh, JCon one and with uh, yeah, and now with matrix. Does a, these are the matrix if you would like to look professional. So you will see everything, right? And um, what's uh, what's cool uh, 
is as they are available as JSON. So it is really easy to build a simple web app and expose them without Prometheus, for instance. But uh, even cooler, now what's really interesting is the scope application. So now you see my business metrics. And these are the backs, um, ba so you can build a dashboard and see you know how many items are sold or how many frauds were actually attempted. So I have to admit I misuse Prometheus for business metrics in Grafana all the time. So my dashboards are not that exciting, but my clients really like that. Um, okay, now, even further, right? So the next question is, yeah, but we need hysterics. So okay, if you like, do it. But um, what we could do actually, yeah, and uh, by the way, this works accidentally. This would be better, application scoped. Now, what we could do, we can say this good morning is a really slow operation. And it could also throw errors. So what I could do is I could apply the circuit breaker, for instance. Circuit breaker is built in without, unfortunately, without hysterics. And um, so um, so your wall was still small. In the one project, they, they deployed hysterics in the whole infrastructure with the with the Java E, so that everything twice, everything with Java E applications that I can provide plus hysterics. Now, circuit breaker, so we can say, uh, for instance, um, Request volume threshold 10, uh, failure ratio is half, and, uh, and success is 2. So what this means is um, if 5 out of 10 um, requests are, um, will fail, their circuit breaker will open, and, um, and after, two suc af after a timeout period, which is usually, I think, 5 seconds, the uh, success threshold of two, and it will close again. So this is circuit breaker. Um, and if you can say, okay, but I need a fallback. And the fallback is, uh, fallback method is uh, default morning. So, they have to correspond and I can say, Return still nice. So and now what happens is on error, we don't have any errors, but we can introduce some. So So now, should still work, where is it? Still nice. So we have this, what we else, interesting probably, are uh, what I did, a little bit different in Java 8. I use managed executor service and use the JAXORS and the completable future pipeline to implement bulkheads. They are even nicer. Now I can say, um, I would just comment it out. I could say, hey, these are bulkheads. And the bulkhead is um, no bulkheads, right? And I have specified a value of two, oh, but this is strange. Why that? Value and waiting task queue exactly. So we have a value of two, but the interesting part is the waiting task of uh, let's say one. And then I will delete that again. And what this means is now only one thread at a time can access the method. And if it uh, uh, if the queue fills up here, then the fallback is going to be called. So it's actually very easy to understand what happens behind the scenes if you need it. So I'm a little bit afraid. This is they also started with all the patterns. That they first they will you know introduce all the annotations, all the patterns. And then afterwards, they will, will think about what they actually would like to build. But I think you should start at the beginning to break your applications using stress tests. And if the application breaks, it's a really nice thing to, 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 uh, to fix that with built-in annotations. So we have bucket of two. And now we'll make the application a little bit slower. Thread sleep. And let's say, uh, no, longer. One second. Now, let's see if I'm lucky. So it should mean if I'm fast in one point of time, 
I should only see default morning uh, until the the queue becomes empty. So uh, now try that. Hmm. Too fast, even for Java. E. No, it's okay. It just. It no, it's okay. You see, it waits for a second. It waits, and then if I'm too fast, still nice, fall back. Then I wait a little bit, it works. So this is the indicator. If I'm too fast, it falls back. Okay? Understood, uh, uh, bulkhead? Built in. Now the nice story is Maven clean install. Now my application grows because histrings and everything is inside. So um, now we have 5K. Of course, it doesn't look professional. So what you can do, you can create, you know, some heavy jars without any implementation just to look more professional. But it's not required, right? So um, now this is my daily work with Java. This is actually what I do. And not only I, it's on the, uh, actually startups are using this more and more because it's that productive. By the way, what you usually also do, we never play directly with OpenShift. Uh, mini shift uh, console, how much time do I have? Marcus? Yeah, you are only on Facebook the whole time. <laughs> okay. So this is one of my proof of concept. Uh, this is running behind the scenes, and this is uh, uh, this is um, Whitefly 14, uh, running on uh, Kubernetes, uh, HA, etcd, and so forth. Um, so we have a proof of concept called Micro Java. It has nothing to do with the conference, but I thought I could show you how how it behaves in the clouds. And um, so what I could do to show you. Let's go with the micro. Uh, okay, now I'm in micro. So I would like to start the build. I do a full push with Kubernetes right now, micro. And the um, war is also micro. And now, so watch that. So this was killed, and the other one is started, done. So uh, this is actually, this was slow. This is very first time today, so i do it again. This was full deployment of a Java E pod uh, on Whitefly full. So it is not, it is not uh, micro pro profile capable, but I'll show you this again. Uh, where was it? Yeah. So do it again. And watch this. Done. And uh, this is this is usually how it works. If it is slower than this, usually you have a bandwidth problem between the registry or the Docker, or whatever. And this was binary built. So what it means is it, it pulls the CentOS 7 with Whitefly from the Docker registry, and I'm just replacing the war. Um, um, this is this actually clouds. And similarly well, it works in ECS, Amazon ECS. Um, one of project we use ECS from Am Amazon. So actually, and there was never the case where we found the application server too large. Why? Because usually it's always the same size, 500 max. And what, what, what's, what's inside Java comes with about 150 megabyte or more installed on your hard disk, OpenJDK. CentOS 7 comes around 200 megs. And most of the application servers are around 200 megs on the hard disk. The Open Liberty is the smallest, but it's not like, you know, it is five megs and the Glassfish has 200 megs or two gigs. They are very, very similar. Okay, questions? Yes. Yes. But they are default. This is what I show is lesser known. What you can do, you can start build, and I will have to point to a, to a GitHub registry, and then it will just work. So this is actually easier to show you an STI build. Uh, if there are no other questions, I will show you this. So I, um, I will have to s go here to Whitefly. Uh, and this is 14, application name, pink. And I need a, a repository. Now go here, Adam Bean, pink. Any other questions? This doesn't matter. This is just fun now. Yeah, what's wrong with you? You can say this was too complicated. We don't like it. 
everything is crazy. Uh, we need Rust to be efficient, or, or whatever, right? So uh, with a little bit of luck, so now this ping is started. This is a complete S2I image, unprepared, which uh, pulls uh, from uh, from Docker everything. So now the Maven build is started. Whether it works or not, I don't know. I just try that. Let's see what happens. So this is a full build with without. Oh, it is already pushed. So it was already built from and, and, and pushed. It means we have now deployment. And uh, pink. This was the pink. And let's take a look. Yeah, it's already started. So unfortunately, it's also quick. Um, so what I will have to do is to say OC expose service pink. Now I get a public route routable uh, um, address. Services pink here. And this is the white fly. Pink resources, I think. No, just pink, right? Yeah, this is my project from GitHub. And now it this was the full deployment from GitHub with image which comes with OpenShift. I have no idea what happened, but this was the pure S2I image. What I usually use the binary S2I image, so you can push wars directly without rebuilding that. Okay, any other questions? Criticism, whatever. So, and this, um, now we have in MicroProfile, we get concurrency API, which is also nice, so we have complete control over concurrency which could be interesting if you're building your own batch jobs and uh, more control over, you know, the concurrency. But um, I have to say, I'm really pleased with MicroProfile. And by the way, uh, what I forgot, the, 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 the coolest stuff is, because I cannot see it anymore in projects, is the, um, 8080 Open API. So you get a default swagger or Open API endpoint without any annotations. And uh, if you get the annotations, the annotations come with MicroProfile. So and so it means uh, what I see is the complete swagger pollution. So everything has swagger runtime and swagger annotations. And the best thing is the output from swagger. You will see, you know, get customers, and the and the documentation is the best. Like get customers, returns customers. If they are good, yeah. If they are lazy, get customers. Or delete customers, they delete customer. Yeah. Or or, or if this is not res uh, resource oriented, like remote procedure call REST, so this is get customer detail. This says invokes method get customer details. So I have to say, Swagger is as bad as you know SOAP was before, and uh, VSDL was the same. The idea was good, but the execution is terrible, at least in enterprise projects. Okay. Red light, or you wanted to show me something? Oh, I'm already time out. So then, questions? Other questions? We can. Oh, scaling. Wait a second. So I will try uh, scale the thing. Um, OC scale uh, DC pink replicas equals two. Scaled? Where is it? We have to see this. Now, micro Java E, we have what we have here two parts of the thing, two. Now we can go with three. And now this is the project which I downloaded for GitHub. Now we have three with full white fly. I get the question why I'm not using uh, how it's called white fly swarm or thorn tail? And my answer is do you think it's going to be faster than this? If yes, I would use it. If not, I don't care. Okay? And now we have uh, three instances behind load balancer with Java E plus microprofile full stack, diverse possible experience you can get. And the this 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 the oldest MacBook available with this design. <laughs> this is the truth. Any other questions? If not, after the session I will show you how to build reasonable apps, how to structure them with Java E. So um could be fun. I'm I'm staying here. So I'm um, no questions. Yeah. Yeah. Your talk is when? One? Four fifteen to five o'clock. Four fifteen to five. Emily yeah. will talk about microprofile and yeah.
you should really attend because she knows about a micro profile really I'm, I'm just a user so I'm, I'm using the stuff and she is designing so if you're not happy what you saw today go to her and say okay you have to change that you know this is too complicated or, or whatever <laughs> right yeah, really no, no so you. you have to um, attend the session Tobias you're also talking here no. oh <laughs> vacations just lazy <laughs> any other question was wrong never if I knew this Next time I would just hack on Keynote. I thought I would be no more human. Some slides, and it works south. Uh, do you have any, like, uh, after using micro profile, what's your, like, uh, feedback and uh, which areas need to be improved uh, and so on? Which areas do you think work well? So what's, um, there are small things, like, for instance, the um, uh, healthness checks. So usually you get readiness and, and lightness checks, so they have to be separated. In, in this probably already solved. Coming, yeah. In the uh, we are currently just uh, put a stack. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean for the split? Uh, the to design to an uh, to an point. Why is the yeah. lightness? We are. Well, my my feedback was th uh, so obvious that I thought I don't put it because you are already working on it probably. Yeah, yeah. And 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 this I, I have to say I really like that and. Uh, this mi micro profile is uh, our GitHub project, so you can go to GitHub and, 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 and just help and pull requests. And most of the people you already know, there are lots of Germans I saw from, from Red Hat, yeah, right? Yes. Uh, so uh, you can uh, get a, a direct feedback, and if you have a good idea, you can start your own project. Oh, another killer feature of micro profile, I completely forgot to mention, but there was no way I could show you this. In one project, we had to use uh, key uh, key yeah, Keycloak for opens, uh, open SSO, and this was a Payara project. And then you have to use uh, servlet adapters from, from, from Keycloak, which you will end up having additional dependency, which is big, instable, and so forth. And what we did is Keycloak is OAuth too, and MicroProfiler comes with JWT, JSON Web Token. Yeah. So, and what we did is we used a MicroProfile with JSON Web Token without any dependencies to Keycloak. We want to have thin wars, and it worked perfectly. And um, this was, and Open Liberty has even better support or easier support. The only thing was, you know, the only, I would say, challenge was the sharing of the key. But this like is, you know, this is like a cryptography. So the public and private key have to be split. But uh, for instance, this uh, another, and w what you get with MicroProfile, you can inject these JSON web token tokens, or how to call it, the three parts directly. So you get the injection. And the um, JWT user is automatically converted to principal and all the roles. So it works out of the box. And this was, as a, uh, my client <laughs> was really delighted. They say this is really cool because our uh, web app, not Angular, because we are also, you know, uh, um, also reasonable in the front end. So um, <laughs> our web app talks to Keycloak with single sign-on and uses the JSON web token, sends it back to Payara, and we are authenticated. And this was, uh, this was actually great. So this is an open API. Also, you can kill Swagger annotations, which I really hate everyone dependency to Swagger. Then uh, you get the uh, uh, JSON web token. And from Java EE8, I think the, the huge improvement is SL375, I guess, or 275, is the security API. So you get one injection point, and you have your, the, all the users and all the roles in a hash map. So basically, you can implement your own store. It's very, very easy. HTTP authentication built in. So for me, it, look, it looks great. And what my o I'm only afraid of the optimization, that the community will start Java is too big. We need 50 profiles, and, and now we need you know, better breed, forget it. So it is very small, keep it like it is, and I will call it DX developer experience. And what I would expect from Jakarta E, that it will say, look, from developer, you have one dependency, use it. Microprofile the same, you know, one bomb, use it. Not like every developer will have to pull th their own dependencies. And the worst idea ever was the first edition of uh, um, Whitefly Swarm. Well, you have to create, uh, there was like a Maven wizard where you can put your dependencies and it created with a huge mechanism an application server with your application inside. So what it means is if I build the application once, I would rebuild the whole runtime plus the application and I say, you are crazy. And now they introduced a uh, hollow jar, way better. One application server, never build it again, and you're just building what changes. Okay? Enjoy the conference. Is it over or we have two hours to speak? Do you like? <laughs> Over? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, questions. So this Please. is. Please. Yeah. At least one. And not from speaker. <laughs> Marcus, from you? I have no question. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, probably a bad sign. Oh, one question there. Two questions. So, do you have any experience with Spring? Uh, Spring Boot. So um, not a lot. So you, um, I helped in. Uh, this was a funny story actually. Um, there was uh, last year they they hired me. This was a Spring Boot project. I didn't knew that, and they thought this is Java E. And they found me, and they, they called me, and was, they look at this. It's like this is not Java. It's like why not? It's like because it's called Spring Boot. It's like ah okay. Now, um, <laughs> and um, I I have no idea about Spring Boot. So what I did, I I created all the uh, proof of concept on Whitefly, and they asked me why you are so fast, why why is so quick the deployment? I'm like I I don't know. Usually people complain deployment is slow. It's like no, it's incredibly fast. And they showed me what they are doing. It was like I didn't knew that. But one deployment uh, on Spring Boot took like one minute. And they end up having in the jar everything. It's like, you are building everything always? They say, yes. Why? We don't know. <laughs> and I uh, tried to ask at conferences why they do this. And I got one reasonable answer. And the answer was, uh, all the Uber jars and Fetch jars attempts started before Docker. And before Docker, there was no layering. So if you deploy Fetch jars on bare metal without any of this, it's perfect. So uh, the uh, white file swarm makes sense. If you build your complete runtime on bare metal and you start Java minus jar, you think. But in the cloud, I would like to have the separation. So, I, but I'm a Spring Boot rookie. Whatever clients ask me is Java E. In one particular case, they asked me about Java E and had actually Spring Boot. But uh, they were happy at the end, and they kept doing Spring Boot, and I could help them because at, at the end it was Java. It was very similar to Java E. The only thing was the deployment was different. And they started with a main method, and they built their own server. This is what I can tell you. Yeah. Uh, someone else? Yeah. Uh, you said you avoid Angular. Yeah. What do you use? Uh, we use more and more nothing, so web, okay. web standards. And if you have to use something, I would use React, probably. Okay. Uh, Vue is nice. The problem with Vue is just one developer. So boost factor is a little bit dangerous there. And uh, Polymer is also nice. But if you have Polymer, the question, you can always do po Polymer afterwards. So uh, React is everyone is happy. I never saw an unhappy uh, React developer, and I never saw a really happy Angular developer. <laughs> if they were not, you know, functional programming, if they didn't talk about the business logic, but they really like RxJS, they talked the whole how beauty HTTP dollar is, and I said, okay, we are fetch, also works, but yeah, this is different, different, different opinion. Uh, you know Angular four or five. So my my personal opinion is Angular one was great. And Angular 2 is like, my opinion is all, like, all the old J2E developers with xdoclet and so forth quit building servers and I'll say we do the same in the front end. Yeah. And with some support from OSGI uh, group, like <laughs> modules, export, in, uh, injection, and then it was so complicated, then, then the xdoclet uh, people ha help out, they have a, a command line interface to generate a view. <laughs> if I would start, it's like, we knew you need command line interface, to create a Java E component, it will never fly. You will call me crazy. But it's absolutely okay to have a command line interface to generate a button in a browser. <laughs> now the question to you. How many files are downloaded if you start with Angular? You start <laughs> Angular, you would like to have Hello World on the screen. The standard way, how many files are downloaded, I know that, I'll show you why, in a node modules. This information is one, e one week old. How many? Who is? 3,000? Anyone else? No. <laughs> More than application servers, uh, 30, 32,000. And why I know that? Because my uh, backup stopped working, and I have to exclude all the node modules. It's imp impossible. So I, I have the whole source code from Whitefly, Glassfish, all the servers, and there's never a problem. And now I have a couple of buttons in Angular, and now everything doesn't work anymore. <laughs> and um, and uh, 32,000 now uh, you get uh, files in node modules if you start with a button. And everyone is happy. It's like, like it's lightweight framework and so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Java e is slow because uh, I saw server which were one makes uh, smaller than this, right? Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? And Angular is very popular in Europe and Germany. In, in US, is going down. As it's not like, yeah. <coughs> no questions then. Thank you. Ah, uh, last question or what? Now then, see you in 10 minutes here. Yeah.